So we were seeing a lot of children that are injured, but some also that have birth defects, uh, cleft lip and palate. What is Ukraine going through? And what are Christians in Ukraine going through? We have the president of the Christian Medical Association of Ukraine, Dr. Rudy Mohovich is with us today. He's on the ground, so he knows the answers to those questions. And with Rudy is Dr. Steve Orton. He's an MD and a reconstructive surgeon from here in the United States. And he's taken several medical mission trips over to the Ukraine to help children and the wounded, which is what Rudy's organization does. The golden rule tells us, in everything, do unto others what you would have them do unto you. Let's hear what's going on. Welcome, we're so glad you're here. And I really want to start with you, Rudy, because I know you grew up in Ukraine and you're over there working away for the Lord. So tell us what it's like. We're a life and family show. So tell us kind of that life and family story for you. Oh man, um, long, long, long short version. Um, I grew up in Christian family and uh, uh, when, when go through medical school, I faced my beautiful wife and we got married and we have wonderful child two and a half, half six years old. He's almost toddler, but he behaved like he is. Uh, so, uh, and um, I, um, entered to my um, scholarship program, um, internship program in neurology, finished it, practice in that. But uh, at that time, I also became a president of Christian Medical Association. And uh, as war started, um, I had to be full-time involved in this ministry. So I left my practice and right now serving uh, with our team. Um, and it's taking a lot of time. Um, so, um, but we blessed to be together, uh, in Ukraine together. And, uh, um, since the beginning, they've been supportive to me and, uh, um, especially, especially Aaron, cause he's a child. He doesn't worry and he doesn't care about what's going on. At least you play with him. <laughs> <laughs> so Aaron, you're saying is supportive to you at two and two and a half, two yes. and six months. Yes because yes. he just wants to play. Yes, so yes, it's... yes. Because uh, you might hear it explosions and you might um, he'll read the news about those horrible things. But when he's coming home and he's like, daddy, daddy, let's go and play. And he's jumping on you, smiling, hugging you. Um, you have to be with him. <laughs> and you're forgetting about all this thing. And we focus on the, the things that are close to you. Mm. So he was our um, therapist for free, psychologist for free. <laughs> <laughs> Brings joy and comfort in the midst, yes. it sounds like, yes. uh, a light for yes. you guys. That's so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So you're starting as your first time parenting. And, yes. And enjoying that. Uh, and did you have a family of a lot of children? Uh, I grew up in a family when I had two older sisters and one younger brother. So yeah, it was pretty, pretty crowded. Uh, and we all grew up in with other um, uncles and aunties. Uh, so it was a fun. So uh, uh, it sounds like a great community. That's yes. what I've heard yeah. where you're supporting each other. And, and as I understand, you were saying a Christian community. Yes. Yeah. Supporting each other. So tell us from your perspective, what is going on in Ukraine? Give us, you know, here we are in the States, you're over there. What are your thoughts of what's going on? So it's different. Um, in 80% um, of the country is not under occupation and it's pretty the same life as here in US and Dallas. So restaurants, coffee shops are open. Everything is working. Only air alarm system can interrupt it. Um, sometimes rockets flying here and there, but it's not like that you are sometimes imagining super dangerous and Stephen can tell it uh, he'd been multiple times um in in ukraine and um and and what we see in in 
in this central and west part, the churches are growing because numbers of people were relocated. They're in need of work, they're in need of help. And the church became a shelter, an answer for, for this need. Um, so um, that's why when, when you answer in, on a need of person, you can preach the gospel better. That's what Jesus did. Like, he was not afraid that people will follow him for only food or health. No, he was telling them, you, you are here only for food, but I'm going to give you something more. But he, at the same time, he was giving it food. So we are, we are as a church, doing the same. We're giving them food, clothes, um, medical help, a workplace, um, and other things uh, to answer, to face them in their needs. But also we preach them, we show them a God who are caring about them and facing the most complicated situation. And it, he's not far away, he's close to them. Uh, and that's why churches are growing. But it's, I would say, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Really? Um, of course, reasons are bad, but this is beautiful. What's going on in occupation right now? That the territory was it was occupied. It's not beautiful. It's that you're not going to know it in CNN or New York Times. Churches are being closed. Pastors are being persecuted. Uh, um, some of the churches were occupied and it's in Soviet Union were made like a sports uh, sport gyms uh, and, and other things to to uh, to, to demolish a Christian impact uh, because um, only only one faith only Orthodox Russian Orthodox Church can be there and uh, and and Russian Orthodox Church it's actually um, I, I really believe that it's a church it's more it's by service uh, unfortunately, that's what we're facing. They're not preaching the gospel. Um, and uh, they're closing all Protestant churches almost. Uh, they persecuted. We, we, we heard a story when the pastors were kidnapped or are taken to the prison for a time and then released. So uh, the, the Christians on those territories facing... Um, I, I cannot even compare it to something. Um, similar that what is in Soviet Union time when everyone was persecuted by the state because they thinking that Baptists or Protestants they are connected somehow to the West so they're spies they're not believers they're not real Christians they're American spies well and I want to make sure that people understand uh, you're saying the occupied areas and explain what you mean by there's a difference you're saying mm -hmm. for the unoccupied areas, which you're saying is 80%, yeah. but there's the occupied areas. What do you mean by that? So those regions are right, like Crimea, Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporozhye, part of Kherson region, uh, that they've been able to occupy to take in 2014 or or right now in, in the beginning of war. And so what you're saying is occupied means that Russia yes. has come in and yeah. take full yes. uh, power. They have, I hear that they're also, as they go through, they're demolishing a lot of the cities. So when you say occupied, you mean that Russia has come in yes. and basically probably wiped out a lot of the city as far as buildings or not. Uh, uh, but it, that's what occupied means, is that the Russians are in control of that area and they are persecuting the Christian pastors and shutting down the, the Protestant churches unless it's the Russian Orthodox Church. Yes, 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 it's right. Um, uh, the, the destructions are happening on the front. Uh, um, let's say Melchopol is occupied, but there is not a lot of destruction. Uh, because it's pretty expensive to send rockets back and forth uh, just to destroy a building. Uh, but when it's in the front, it's like 15 kilometers in one side and 50 kilometers in the other side. Yes, there's totally destroyed cities. You, you can see by the drones uh, uh, photos that it's, it's barely confined, a, a place too high from the sun. Everything is... And it's taking not one just shot to destroy the building. It's, it's, sometimes it's take a couple shots to destroy it, many. 
And yeah, it's nothing similar that we faced since World War II, I guess. Um, but when, well, when we're talking about Melitopol, Novokokovka, we are hearing stories from pastors that some of the churches were closed um, uh, or taken by the army uh, to use in their goals. Um, so they're not destroyed, they're not bombed, uh, but because the life is there also somehow continued. Businesses are working, people are working there and here uh, doing something. It's not like, like life stopped. No, the life is going on, uh, but it's been changed by Russian controllers. And you're saying that they, the Russians are persecuting pa some pastors and are they imprisoning them or what's yeah. happening? Yes, they are. Yes, yeah, they are. And um, the, the, the biggest impact on it, it's not only imprisoning. You, you will imprison one to a couple persons. Others will be afraid, they will not preach it will leave to a war. So it's not only about two-day impact, it's also about tomorrow impact. So, and um, and when you're thinking about this, it's it, more catastrophic. It's like not planting a seed and you're not gonna expect the field is gonna be full. So there's not gonna be food for the future. If there's not food, then they're hungry. If there is, people are hungry, there is death. And, and it's all in spiritual the same. There's gonna be a lot of impact and, and that the, the people who could, could be safe and hear the hospital, they will be not because people are afraid to preach. People are afraid um, to, to demonstrate their Christian, uh, really Christian values. And I've heard that you have been involved that the Russians have been kidnapping Ukrainian children and taking them from their parents. And you are very much aware of this because you've been getting some of them back. Is that correct? Um, not exactly we. We mm -hmm. work with the organization and we help them and cooperate, coordinate and help some, some goods sending. Yes, unfortunately, we, we have those story. We cooperate with Ukrainian, Save Ukraine organization. They're, they have primary focus on children. A Finland organization, I'm not gonna tell the name on, on, on it because uh, it's, not, it's not public, it's dangerous. Um, so uh, yes, unfortunately, we, uh, we face a situation when children are being kidnapped by different situations. Sometimes it's like a, a peaceful evacuation but then parents cannot get information about their children. Or um, let's go for a camp. We, we will organize a camp for your t children and they never come back. And they're telling to children like, your, your parents forget about you. They don't want to have you. Uh, they left for Ukraine and uh, they betrayed you. Uh, and, and all the similar stories like Ukrainian hates you, Ukrainian bombs you and uh, or forbid to speak in Ukraine language and yeah it's it's the reason why um, Putin was um, announced as a criminal by national court uh, and uh, it's it's the most one of the most horrible things that they're doing it's I just I, I couldn't believe in it because I, I thought it's it's different it's not so bad but it's even better than we can imagine. It's even badder, is what you're saying. Is that what you're saying? Worse. Worse. It is worse, worse than worse we I'm sorry. can imagine. Yes. Yeah. yeah, even worse than we can imagine. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's the case. But there is a light with uh, the Christian Medical Association of Ukraine that you're president of. What's that organization doing? So uh, we, uh, we, we, create, we were created in 1991. And uh, we've been engaged in different medical ministry, education before war. But since the beginning, uh, international Christian medical community was mobilized. And, uh, and th that's why church is strong. In the time of crisis, you, sometimes you can say, oh, church is weak. But no, in the time of crisis, we can show our strength. Let's wrap you in here, Steve. You by your own choice, went over because you heard of the need to help with medical mission. When the Russian invasion began its greatest impact, and I started watching what was happening on the news, 
and then listening to Jesus' words. And he said in Matthew 24, there's going to be wars and there's going to be rumors of wars and there's going to be pestilence and destruction and a lot of bad things that happen in this world. But he said, do not be afraid and don't let your love grow cold. Um, so I was reading these words of Jesus and seeing these atrocities, uh, little children laying in the street and old people being shot in the back. And I thought, and, and really it wasn't my choice. It was kind of the call of God to say, come and help and do, do what I can. But I didn't know how to go or, or how to get there or what to do. And then I met a young man at the gym where I work out. And he, he said, I was in the Peace Corps in Ukraine. I go every month and take them supplies. And I said, well, God opened a door. And I said, uh, I've got a week of vacation coming. Maybe I could go and help. Since the war started, I have been watching the war, trying to understand, and I was seeing the horrors of the war and I always felt I wanted to do something to help Ukraine. We knew of friends from the Ukraine that were in the United States who were coming over here and helping the Ukrainian people. And when I saw that they were helping and coming into the country, I thought, well, maybe I could do something. You are brave and courageous, and we uh, are very privileged to be here. In June of last year, I came over for the first time with one other doctor uh, and a businessman friend and Ed, Edward Ma from the Peace Corps. And we came into the country. They introduced us to some of the doctors here at Medit, And uh, they accepted me so warmly. Uh, then uh, we met Rudy of the Christian Medical Association, Rudy Majovic, uh, and he helped us uh, acquire things that we needed and transportation. And so we came back again in September I came in December by myself. Our other doctors in the United States were hearing about our trips to Ukraine and how we were helping. And so they said, maybe we could go and help too. So we put together this team of about eight to 10 people and uh, came over this time. This has been our biggest project yet. These days were very busy for us. The first day was for consultations. We managed to examine more than a hundred children. That's a lot. It may also seem a bit chaotic, but we couldn't say no to anyone. Babies and children with deformities that they're born with, um, but also tumors of both children and adults in the head and neck area. Uh, sometimes trauma and scar revision from burns or other traumatic events. These are mostly the, the procedures we're doing here. First baby we did was a very difficult bilateral cleft lip and palate. The prolabial segment was very far forward. The most difficult case was a baby that had a vascular malformation in the neck that was about this big and it was filled with blood vessels. I had to remove it out of the neck and save nerves, mm -hmm. and uh, it went very well. It will totally change um, how they can function, how they can eat, and also uh, their smile. Probably the hardest part was, though, was not getting uh, some of our supplies from across the border. And because of that, it, it is delaying our, our work here. But the fact that sometimes our uh, supplies get lost by the airlines and, and then they're hard to find, it makes it harder for us too.
God's opening up doors right and left. I went into the military hospital and they said, no civilian doctors can work here, not even our own civilian doctors. And they said, uh, I said, well, I just come in the, in the love of Jesus. I wanted to see what I could do to help. And so he said, well, okay, maybe you can operate on our soldiers out in the civilian hospital. And so I said, fine, whatever will help you. And uh, the next time I came, the colonel said, you came back. And he hugged me and he said, you can operate here. And that's what the love of God does. It just opens doors, it opens hearts. And uh, so we've been able to go a few times. I've been four times. We'd, we make our fifth trip with eight other doctors uh, this October. You know, it's a difficult situation. There is suffering, but I think we are called the first command. One of the first commandments or most often repeated commandments in the Bible is don't be afraid. And the next one, one of the next ones is rejoice in the Lord. And Jesus said, I want your joy to be full. So, you know, there's hard times there's suffering, but we try to bring a little joy and, and help and love and hope in a dark world. I barely believe him that he operated in a military hospital because there's a really strict rules to operate there. I don't know any other people that operated there. So it was a really like God's opening doors mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to go and, and meet those people and uh, pray with them uh, and help them. So yes, Steve did an amazing job. And so you were able to operate on a wounded military. We operate on wounded soldiers, reconstructing faces. Uh, and then we've, we've got several more soldiers on this next trip that we're gonna be operating on. We work in collaboration with the Ukrainian military doctors and civilian doctors, and they're seeing horrific injuries. So we're learning from them just because of the, the massive injuries that they're, that they're facing. It's reconstructive surgery that you're doing for these uh, wounded soldiers. Correct. Yeah, there we just looking word yesterday it's through new cases that we're gonna operate. And even as a doctor, I couldn't watch it that moment could go to watch it. Because so uh, it's it's extremely hard. And yeah. So now we just mentioned the soldiers, but there's all the children you're helping as well, right? <laughs> that was kind of almost more your focus prior to the war, but has still been since the war, tell us about, and I guess I'll start with you, Steve. Tell us about the children that are being helped. Oh, we're, we're seeing children that are burned by incendiary bombs. Uh, so I've operated on a lot of children with burn scars, burn contractures uh, that couldn't run, couldn't walk very well. We release the scars on the back of their legs so they can walk and run normally. I saw a little boy who uh, probably 70% of his body was burned and from an incendiary bomb and uh, that caused a fire. And I, I said, well, you know, um, I, I can't, we can't take away all these scars, but what could I do for you? And he said, I wanna be able to run again and play. And uh, he had some uh, thick scar bands on the back of his legs. So we were able to release those scar bands and he became, came on national news then all across Ukraine of, of joy and, and ability to run again. And, to, and so, you know, we, we do what, what little we can, but sometimes those little contributions we make, God turns into a huge success story. And so we're just, we're pleased to be able to do that. A little girl I saw had a vascular malformation of the lip and her lip was three or four times the normal size. And she was very embarrassed. She wouldn't leave the house. She couldn't get a job. And uh, we resected the vascular tumor of her lip and reconstructed her lip. And I, I learned six months later, she got engaged to be married. So that was, she was a little 19 year old girl. Uh, and now is a beautiful girl. Uh, That's awesome. But um, so we were seeing a lot of children that are injured, but some also that have birth defects. Uh, cleft lip and palate is a, is a horrible, uh, a, a very unpleasant, unsightly deformity that keeps children from being able to eat. And it's embarrassing and things like that. Can't, they can't talk as well. And they have ear problems. So repairing that changes a little child's life forever. So. And you do those, right, Rudy? The Christian Medical Association of Ukraine is also doing the cleft lip and other uh, surgeries for children and, and for wounded children. 
Uh, yes, together with other doctors and teams uh, from all over the world, uh, Taiwan, uh, United States, uh, they are coming and doing operation together. And, and uh, icing on the cake, right? As you do it all for, for in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. A great right. opportunity, a freedom that mm -hmm. we have, and that's why I'm, we are telling um, my messages many times. It's not just some politician. It's literally the good against evil. We and and what are they? Do? They bring some something that they can do. I, I'm excited about such people as Stephen because uh, I'm not a warrior. I'm not a millionaire. I'm not a billionaire. But I want to do something. So people don't have excuses. They just have to try to do something. They can. They can have a distance and tell, oh, I don't see the problem because I'm too far. Or they can be involved in that and they can see it, probably God in it. Because God is, we see the God obviously. It's easier to join to God's work than to look for it. So uh, I believe that we, we, are, we have a freedom of speech in Ukraine and we can pray with the patient, we can show the love of God. And we are crossing the border and we cannot have, we don't have this opportunity. Crossing the border to Russia yes. or to the occupied yes. territories. Yes. And then you don't have the opportunity again. No. It's, it's, they've, it's really forced atheism, isn't it? Yes. Is that? Mm. Some of the meaning. Mm, yeah, it, I, it, I guess it, you have the Orthodox Church, yes. you know, the Russian yes. Orthodox. Russian Orthodox. Something that was similar in World War II in Germany. Mm. They, they were believers. He was hiding by Jesus' name, but actually they were not. So, yeah, we see how, how it's a little bit more than politician and other things, a little bit more than what, what media is showing sometimes to us. We see that God is not with Ukrainian. He is on the side of good. I'm telling you, I was near the front. I, I heard the story of the military. I heard, I saw the people wounded. I, I, we saw God and in a miraculous way that he was protecting people. Um, our teams, when, when we had a mobile clinic in near, near Fraun, and uh, by some circumstances, we had to cancel it. And it was good because on the same day, rocket trap in the church place. Someone gave the location that we're gonna have mobile clinic there. And, and yeah, and all doctors, all patients were saved because we canceled the mobile clinic. And, and we can't explain it, but we definitely can see the God in it. We definitely do uh, uh, want to know how people can get in touch with your organization, Rudy. Go to Christian Medical Association, uh, cma.org, or find on in social media, Facebook, Instagram. Um, there's mails um, and phone numbers. You can easily contact with us right on, on the page, and we would um, like to work with you and serve to the Lord. Lead us in a prayer, Steve. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Father, we're so grateful that you're here among us and you work in us and through us and, and even beyond our means. But we're grateful to have your presence in our life because your presence means that good things are in store. And uh, you are a God of our salvation uh, you are the you are the joy and the meaning of our life, and we ask now that you would bless uh, Rudy and Dr. Rudy and the Christian Medical Association, bless the efforts that they're doing for Ukraine, and for the good that they produce in your name and to your glory. Please be with the people of Ukraine as well. We pray for peace. We also pray for the people of Russia, and you bring their hearts to serve you. May we all. Um, bow down before your goodness and your glory and become a part of what you are involved in. We thank you that you're with us every day and that through Jesus, whether life or death, uh, our future is secure and, and we have hope in Jesus. Please also bless um, Parent Compass and the good things they do to bring Jesus to, to the world because we see your son Jesus as the most beautiful being and the role model for all of us. And may we emulate him. May we be like him. 
may you eliminate the, the evil in our own hearts and uh, fully surrender to your goodwill. We uh, thank you that you're working in this situation and that you will bring about good and we'll follow you whithersoever you're, you lead. In Jesus' name. Dear God, I'm grateful for, for your goodness. I, I'm grateful that we could see your, your hand, your work uh, in all what's going on in Ukraine, even in time of crisis, the church the church is a place of hope. The church is a place of shelter and protection. And um, especially in the darkest time, there is a big light, a big voice of hope uh, to you. And we can see, we literally can see your work. We sometimes can hear you because the such evil and loud voices sometimes can, can make us to forget to hear it. But we definitely see you. We see you in all of those problem and challenges and all of those pain. I'm grateful that you didn't left the people, your church, and you help us and you you together with us is sending us such people as Stephen and other doctors. Thank you for this opportunity to share about your work. Um, not our not our your work may be glorified and please we're asking you to stop this war uh, because there is absolutely evil in it. And we courage by your example, and Jesus is a warrior. He won the biggest victory. He has the biggest victory in the world. He won the evil. Help us to conquer evil too. Fight for the good, fight for the justice. Fight with the law and protection of people. Thank you so much, God, that you encourage people, you bother people's heart so they can be closer to people in pain because it's your example you were was not wealthy kingdoms uh, kings you were with poor people who were in the pain and we are grateful that your followers your disciples are doing the same may your name it be glorified in all sorts of vision where it's good or bad help us to see your hand amen amen oh thank you both so much for being here today and for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank for you, this Natalie. Opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you.